Here's the video on how to do question A2 in the 2019 SDM Lab Assessment. Consider the following sequence diagram concerning the implementation of getPrice in a class burger which also implements main course. Add code to the provided file burger.java to make it consistent with the sequence diagram. Note, because main interface main course and class drink are not provided, your class burger will have errors if you compile it. Do not worry about this. Try to make your own Java code correct. OK. So this is a question which is testing whether or not students understand UML sequence diagrams. Fair enough. Now I'm going to edit my burger.java in my favourite editor which happens to be Emacs. Your favourite editor might be different or you could even load it up into Eclipse and edit it there. That would be fine. So here is our provided file. We see that it implements main course even though that's not provided. We're given some attributes just as kind of a hint. We are to assume that there are constructors and methods handling those, which we don't have to write, but we have to add methods to make the burger implementation consistent with the sequence diagram. OK, so now, what does the sequence diagram impose? Well, the first thing is, clearly, that it's going to ha any object of class burger is going to have to understand the message get price. And we recall from question one that it's returning an integer, which is exactly what we'd expect. So let's put that in first of all. So we're going to have a public int get price, taking no arguments just as we are used to. And we'll come back in a moment and put some behavior in there. But first of all, let's see what else we need. So we're going to need an early bird method. Um, this is only being sent by an object of class burger to itself, so it might well be a private method. Um, and it's going to return a value called e, which is later going to be used inside an out fragment, which expects a boolean a condition inside a square bracket. So we can deduce that the early bird method returns a boolean, and very likely all it's going to do is to return the value of that private attribute is early bird that we were conveniently provided with. So let's assume that that's the case. So it's going to be private boolean early bird. return is early bird. Good. Now, what next? The next message that this an object of class burger has to receive is check validity. It's going to be sent from drink, but it's part of what we have to be able to handle here. Now, we don't know much about this. It's going to return a value validity. It sounds like a boolean. Let's assume it's a boolean. Um, Perdita told us that if there wasn't information about something, we could make any reasonable guess. It had better be at least package visibility, so let's make it public. Otherwise, it couldn't be sent from a different class. And we've got no idea how to calculate what Boolean to return from it. Um, so I'm just going to go return is early bird just because that's a convenient boolean I happen to have lying around. Um, you would get the marks for anything you liked, including return true or return false. Now, are there any other messages that a class of an object of class burger has to, to understand? No. So all we have to do now is to get the behavior of get price correct. So what's he going to do? It's going to send itself early bird, and then depending on the result, it's going to do one thing or another. So let's get that in. I'm going to go if early bird one thing, else t'other thing. And then we're going to have to return a thing. Return something. Hmm. Well, let's go return price since that's what we're supposed to be doing. And price is supposed to be an integer. So let's go int price equals something or other. Well, there's conveniently a base price lying around here, so maybe that's a good choice. Let's just go back in a moment and check what the sequence diagram says. Oh yes, it says add drink price to base price and return the sum. So starting with base price does seem like a sound idea. Now, what's going on inside this confusing out section here? Well, we're sending a message get low price 
to a drink object, which presumably we're linked to, it's doing some stuff which we don't get any control over and don't have to care about. And eventually it's going to return drink price. OK. And in the other case, we're going to send a different message, get standard price to the same object. But again, it's going to return a drink price. OK. So get low price, get standard price. Let's see. If early bird... Now, we have to send a message to a drink object, and conveniently, we see that there is one that we're, that we're linked to. That's obviously the one we're supposed to access. Drink.getLowPrice. Now, what do we want to do? We want to add this to base price, yeah? Price plus equals get drink price. And in the other case, we want to do the other thing. Brace price plus equals drink dot get stan standard price. Now, I think that's probably about right. It makes sense. We set price to base price. Ah, no, I'm a fool. This is why we check. It's price that we want to add this stuff to. Price. Good. Check the early bird. If early bird returned true, then we get low price. Else, we get standard price. We're supposed to add the drink price to the base price and return the sum. So price equals base price. If early bird, price plus equals drink dot low price. Else price plus price price plus equals drink dot get standard price and return price. That's going to be absolutely fine.